Addressing titles and names, the English way. Hello everyone. In today's video, we're diving into the fascinating world of greetings and introductions. Have you ever wondered how to properly address someone by their title or name in English-speaking countries? Well, you're in the right place. Let's get started. Titles are used to show respect and acknowledge someone's position, achievements, or age. In many English-speaking countries, it's common and considered polite to address someone by their title, especially when meeting them for the first time or in formal situations. Mr. Used for adult men, regardless of marital status. Mrs. Traditionally used for married women. Miss. Used for younger women or unmarried women. Ms. A neutral title for women, regardless of marital status. It's often used in professional settings. Doctor. Used for someone who has a doctoral degree. It could be a PhD or a medical doctor. Always good to ask if you're unsure. Professor. Used for university teachers or scholars of high rank. Remember. When addressing someone with their title, it's usually followed by their last name. For example, Mr. Smith or Dr. Johnson. Sometimes, in more informal settings or if given permission, you can address people by their first name. It's always a good idea to ask if you're unsure. For example, is it okay if I call you John? In some cultures, Using first names immediately can be seen as too familiar and polite, while in others, it's a sign of friendliness and openness. When in doubt, always start with the formal address and adjust based on the person's response or the cultural norm of the region. Sir and ma'am. These are general terms of respect, especially when you don't know someone's name. They're often used in customer service or when speaking to higher ups. Honorable. This is a title used for certain high-ranking officials, like judges or politicians in some countries. Esquire or ESC. Sometimes seen after a person's name, especially lawyers. For instance, John Doe, ESC. Cultural variations. It's important to remember that titles and the way they're used can vary from one English-speaking country to another. It's always helpful to do a bit of research or ask locals when you're visiting or communicating with people from a specific region. We hope this guide to addressing people by titles and names in English has been enlightening. Understanding these subtleties is not just about language proficiency but also about navigating cultural norms and building respectful connections. Keep practicing, and we'll see you in our next video. Cheers!